Here's the thing about Android retro handhelds, specifically Retroid Pocket Android retro handhelds. They are all kind of like Android phones with control sticks built in, minus all the stuff you'd get from a phone. And yes, I'm aware the software is different than an actual phone, but come on, it kind of feels like you're playing on a phone. That's why, when I bought the Retroid Pocket 5, I was determined to make it feel like a gaming console. None of that phone stuff in the menu and in the background, just pure gaming goodness. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through my Retroid Pocket 5 setup. My own personal setup. And yes, I'm aware that there are a lot of Retroid Pocket 5 setups now since the console's been out for ages, but my setup's not out there, so there you go. And I'm actually going to keep it super, super duped, stupid simple because this is for like anyone that just wants to get straight into the console and start playing. So let's start my Retro Pocket 5 guide for all the essentials in a simple format and your device is gonna look dope. All right, here are the products you're gonna need. First, a Retro Pocket 5, obviously. And you also need a micro SD card. I recommend this one. For the Retro Pocket 5, I recommend larger SD cards just because you're going to want to play a lot of PS2, GameCube, and Wii, and bigger file kind of games, so it's good to have a card that can hold a lot of space. Now, you also need a micro SD card reader, a USB-C dock. This is what I use to play in a big screen, uh, including when I play multiplayer. You can also get a cheap one like this from Anchor, or you can go with the official dock to really give you a Switch-like experience. Screen protector, that's a nice thing to have. I did get one, but I haven't put it on yet for some reason. I'm such a procrastinator. A case would also be nice. Trust me, you don't want to be dropping this thing. And then finally, it's good to have a Bluetooth controller when you want to game on a TV. And it's, honestly, you could use any old Xbox or PS4 or PS5 controller laying around or any controller that connects via Bluetooth, really. When you start up your Retro Pocket 5 for the first time, you'll be put through the initial setup process, much like any Android phone will have you do. It's really straightforward, and I don't think I need to spend much time here. The one thing I'll say is that when you get to the pre-installed app section, I would just skip all of them. It's better to go to the most up-to-date ones right from the source. Oh, and second thing I'll say is that at the end it'll ask you if you want to install the Retroid Launcher or not. You can if you want. The Retro Launcher is a front end, a good one too, but we're going to install a better one. So you can go with the standard Android install. It doesn't really matter. Now, once you have that initial setup done, take your SD card and put it into Retro Pocket 5. Go to Settings, Storage, select your SD card from the Storage options, then click on the three dots in the corner and hit Format. Make sure you format the SD card for external storage. Then that's it. Next, we're going to want to add our games. First, you want to make a folder on your SD card for your games. To do that, go to the Files app, select your SD card, then hit Add Folder and call it something like Games or ROMs. Within that folder, you'll want to create a folder for every console you plan on using. Next, grab a USB-C cable and plug your Retro Pocket 5 into your computer. On your computer, if you're using a PC, you'll see a drive pop up labeled RP5. On Mac, open Android File Transfer, and that's pretty much it. It'll be right there. Now, all there is to do is copy your ROMs into the respective folder on your Retro Pocket 5's SD card that we made earlier. One thing to note, don't let your Retro Pocket 5 enter sleep mode during the transfer process. This can mess up the transfer process and corrupt some files, or so I've heard. I've never actually tested that, but that's what people say, so just trust it. Don't, don't, un don't unplug it or turn it, put it into sleep mode or anything like that. Anyway, to avoid this, I'd recommend increasing your sleep timer to, well, never, if, if you can do that, or, or just do the, the longest option. All right, so we have our games, but what good are a bunch of ROM files that we have nothing to play them on? Next step, we're going to get our emulators. Probably the most important emulator you'll need is RetroArch. This covers everything from NES to like PS1 and N64. You'll need to download this directly from RetroArch's website. Open your Google app, type in RetroArch, click on this link here, go to Downloads and scroll down to Android, click Download. It'll give you a warning, just tell it's fine, leave me alone, and it'll start downloading. Click on the RetroArch file you downloaded, and it'll ask you if you want to install it. Go ahead and do that. I think it gives you a warning again. I can't remember. It's already installed on mine. Just give it permission. It's fine. Don't worry about it. 
Now you have RetroArch. First, change the UI. This one sucks. Tap the settings icon, scroll to the bottom where it says menu. XMB is like this PlayStation looking one, it's pretty cool, so I'll go with that one. Go back to the home icon, select configuration file, and save current config. Uh, then you'll need to restart. Next, you need to install the cores and select online updater and core downloader. Anyway, select core for the systems you want, and that's it for RetroArch, we're done. By the way, this is a good time to mention one of the greatest gifts of all time to retro gamers, and that's retro achievements. Now, if you don't know what retro achievements are, well, imagine this. You're playing your favorite retro games, you're beating the game, and you're accomplishing all those little cool side quests and completionist kind of things, but instead of just having an empty game to be finished with, you, you earn achievements just like you would on PlayStation or Xbox, and it's freaking awesome. Some of the achievements are really fun and clever. Some of them are super challenging to obtain, but they all appear on an online profile that you'll set up, and then you can showcase it to the world. So, to set up an account, go to retroachievements.org and sign up. Then, on RetroArch, you want to go to this Retro Achievements tab here and put in your login information that you just created when you set up your Retro Achievements account. And now, you'll start earning retro achievements on your retro games. I'd recommend turning on hardcore mode. This is kind of up for debate whether you know people want to do this or not, but I, personally, I like to play the games at their rawest form, so I don't know. And hardcore just sounds dope. It's hardcore. Hardcore mode. So cool. If you want to play PS2 games, you'll need a separate emulator for that. The emulator you'll use is Nether SX2. It's a little less straightforward installing this one, so pay attention. Unfortunately, there really isn't an easier way to get PS2 emulation on your Retro Pocket 5. But the process for installing this has actually gotten a lot easier, so that's nice. First, you'll need to get BIOS files. You can't play PS2 games without it. I can't share where to find it here, but just Google PS2 BIOS files or look up a Nether SX2 install guide and, and see what BIOS files they use. Make a folder on your SD card and call it like uh, BIOS files. That's kind of a funny word, BIOS files, when you say it fast. Anyway, yeah, that sounds good. So put your BIOS files in there. Next, you want to install Nether SX2 Classic. I'll link to the GitHub page here, or you can just Google it. And it's like one of the first few links. Once you're on the GitHub page, scroll down until you see downloads and go ahead and get the latest build. Then open up that file and you'll probably get some warnings. Just ignore those again and install Nether SX2. Go through a couple of setup screens. It'll ask you to grab your BIOS files, navigate to where you made that folder earlier on your SD card, and then it'll ask you also where your games are. Go ahead and select your PS2 games folder, which you also made earlier if you were paying attention. All right, once we're in Nether SX2, there's some settings we're gonna wanna change. So first, Go to this little bar here, and then go to controller settings. Now, for touchscreen, you're going to want to turn this touchscreen controller view off because we don't want to see controls on our screen. We, we have controls on our system already. Then, we're going to go to controller 1 settings, and we're going to bind all our controls. So, every button here, you're going to want to put in the right input that's on your controller on your Retroid Pocket 5. Next, we're gonna wanna go to our app settings and then head over to this graphics tab here. The renderer should be on OpenGL, which is fine. Just use that one. In some games, you're gonna end up using Vulkan, but for the most part, you're gonna be using OpenGL. Now go down over here to where you see widescreen patches. Go ahead and turn this on. This makes sure that any game that has native widescreen is gonna play as widescreen on your console, which is gonna look a lot better on your Retroid Pocket 5. Now, head over all the way to the Achievements tab, and this is where you're gonna log into your Retro Achievements because we're achievement hunters all at heart. So, turn on those achievements and start hunting. I should also mention the screen resolution here. I recommend increasing this. See what your system can really handle. See what games feel like when you're playing on a high resolution. You can always change this later. For GameCube and Wii, you will use the Dolphin emulator. You can just get that off the Google Store, no problem. Once installed, open up Dolphin, no need for BIOS files on this one. On the bottom right, you'll see an Add Games button. Click, and then go to your GameCube folder on your SD card. Alright, so there are a couple settings you're going to want to change on Dolphin. Go to Settings, 
go to config then general and then I'd like to change the fallback region here to NTSCU go down enable save states go back to graphic settings change this to Vulcan and then you want to compile shaders before starting and then go to enhancements internal resolution and go ahead and put this on a 3x resolution now you can tinker with the settings a lot more with dolphin especially for some specific games this will cover most of your games but if there are specific games that are not playing well on these settings go ahead and google that game for retro pocket 5 and see what the best settings are for dolphin and then tinker around with them now we'll also want to go to our gamecube input select standard controller here press on the settings button and then here you're gonna map every single button just like you did on Nether S62 for the PS2 and finally the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to want to turn off that annoying overlay of controls basically all you gotta do is start a game and you'll see these controls overlay on the screen obviously we don't want that so what you're gonna do here is you're gonna swipe to the left Go down to overlay controls and then hit toggle controls. Toggle all. Boom. They're gone. Simple. And by the way, if you're curious, that overlay controls option we just did, it's going to factor in for every single game now. As you can see, no overlay controls. Alright, for 3DS, the recommended emulator is Azahar. Azahar. Yeah. That's the recommended emulator. So for this, all you're gonna do is go to Google Play Store, download Azahar, and install it. That's it. Now, there's actually one step we're gonna do before we open it up. So first, go to your ROMs folder that you made on your RetroPocket 5 uh, SD card, and there, go to your 3DS games. Now, probably your 3DS games are gonna be in the .3DS format. For this, you're gonna need to change them to a different format, and we can literally just change the name of the ROM files. You can do it here on your Retro Pocket 5, or you can do it on your computer, which would probably be easier, but all you gotta do is change the name of the file from .3DS to .cci. Now, open up Azahar, go through the setup process. For permissions, we're just gonna give permissions to all of it. And for data folders, there's gonna be one that's select user folder, and then there's applications. For select user folder, click on that, and then you're gonna create a folder on your Retro Pocket 5 and just call it Azahar. Then for applications, this is where you're going to select your ROM folder. It's going to be on your SD card, hopefully under ROMs or games and under 3DS. Now that Azahar is up and running, you'll see that your games are already there. But first, go to the three dots here, go to settings, and then under graphics, we're going to want to go to the graphics API, make sure that we have open GLES set up there, and then scroll down to your resolution and go ahead and do a 2x resolution. All right, so next, go back to controller settings, and we're gonna bind all our keypads here. So once again, go through every button and bind it to the corresponding button on your Retro Pocket 5. Next, go ahead and start up a game, and then you'll notice that the screen overlay, the control overlay is, is there. We don't want that there, so go ahead and swipe left on your screen and open up the overlay options and then turn that off because it's super annoying and unnecessary. All right. So now that we got all our emulators and games on our device, the last thing we need to do is package everything into a nice front end. What is a front end, you ask? Well, to keep it real simple, it's just a, pretty much a UI that replaces the Samsung background. So, to do that, we're going to get Daijisho. Go to your Google Play Store, type in Daijisho, and then go ahead and install it. Now, I already have it installed on my device, so I'm not gonna go through that here, but it's pretty straightforward. Once you install it, open it up, and then it'll take you to the home screen. On the home screen, it's first gonna ask you to pick the consoles that you're gonna be playing. So, just pick any console that you plan on playing on your RetroPocket 5. Now, after we do that, we need to tell each console where to find our games, in order to do that, hit this plus button here that, that says Paths, and we're going to go ahead and say Add More. Go to your ROMs folder for that specific system, so in this case we're looking at NES, and then hit Use This Folder. 
Now that we let it select that folder, we're going to hit sync, and it's going to add all our games. The last thing you want to do, press on this little pencil notification in the bottom right corner, and scroll down to where it says player settings here. This is what the emulator that G Show is going to use for this specific system is. Just got to make sure that it's the right emulator. Most of the time, it selects the correct one. But if it's not, you just hit this down arrow and make sure that it's selecting the correct emulator. Now, there's a few other settings you do want to mess with. The first one, go to System Settings, go to Apps, Default Apps, and then Home Page, or Home App, sorry. Now, on the Home App, Select Digisho for this. Basically what that means is every time you turn on your Retro Pocket 5 or you press the home button, it's going to take you straight to Digisho. So you're essentially turning your Retro Pocket 5 into a gaming device so that you never have to go through that Samsung Android background slash home page. Other settings you can mess with would be like the appearances. Here you can download all kinds of themes. Mess around with this see what you like personally right now i'm just gonna go ahead with the main theme but there's some pretty cool ones out there so recommend checking them out personalize it to your own liking and that's pretty much it for dig show and now you've got your device set up like a gaming handheld thingy then it's awesome so cool and there you go a quick little guide for setting up your retro pocket 5 to where it feels like a real gaming thingy now, there are a lot of different settings you can tinker with. There are also a lot of standalone emulators that you can download and set up. If you want to go a step further, check out some of the other guides around the internet for specific things. The purpose of this guide was to get you up and running pretty quick without feeling overwhelmed, and I hope I fulfilled that purpose. So, enjoy your Retro Pocket 5. Play some retro games. Do your thing. Yes, do it. Do your thing. Okay, see you on the flippity flop. Lippity? Maybe flippy flop. Why do those sound weird right now? I don't know. Anyway, bye. <laughs>